Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again. Game number two of Infamous versus PSG LGD. Just about to get underway. I am Zayori. Joining me from afar is Trent. We are here in group letter B, our second series of the day. First match was a pretty handy victory for PSG LGD. We'll see if Infamous can take us to a third match. Trent, welcome back, yeah. my friend, to what could be our final match of the day. Wow, handedly handled. Handily uh, handled. One could say. Yeah. Infamous gonna have to figure out uh, who they are. What, what did they do to to get here? I guess is the question. They played a lot of OD. They played a lot of tiny. Uh, and that was about a month ago. So you know, not everything has changed. I think the Shadow Shaman was left in last game too. I feel like that's a hero that uh, a lot of teams have just seen some good success to try and win yourself a game off some early laning stage decisions. And perhaps that's where we we got to set the early lanes. Try and make sure that you have yourself a uh, mm -hmm. a successful remaining. start. I think so. Uh, we were talking a lot, especially in the first series, about comparing carries and how they match up, like PA versus AM, and you kind know, of the nuances with those timings and how those timings change depending on who gets the Battle Fury first, who's making which rotations. That last series, or that last game, rather, we didn't even really get to have that conversation. The Jug was 2K up on the PA before 10 minutes just because the lanes were so lopsided. You know, it wasn't even a, a testament to the carry players as much as the offlaners and the supports that made so much space for them. So I, I would agree. I think Infamous, they need a more level playing field. You know, we need to get to 15 minutes with a game that's still within reach and then see what happens from there. Interesting that they banned the Bounty Hunter too, though. They, I mean, they obviously first picked it overall PSG so they feel like um that basically says that they think that's kind of the strongest hero right now or at least something that you can pick and still have a lot of flexibility with it was a pretty dominant bounty performance you know they did really bounty was. hunter pango off lane i think you were a little bit cynical about how much pressure they'd be able to put on and they worked wonders with that combo i wouldn't really want to play against it again either yeah yeah definitely Ten and uh, infamous remain. again lanes so the nature's profit they removed themselves so I guess they don't really remaining. consider it as strong in the one role, uh, or sorry, in the uh, position five role to like pick it up first overall PSG, because uh, it tends to be the best one to go for, honestly, if you just want to completely secure either the off lane or the safe lane, but uh, they'll wind up with the Bane. So I guess to me, this means they now rate the Bane higher than both the Undying and the uh, NP in that role. But uh, we get to see the Disruptor once again, which I'm again happy to see. And uh, we'll take the Bear. Here's All right. Disruptor Ursa. I think um, you know Disruptor felt good last game, but against Bane, definitely a support matchup that Disruptor can be okay with. And a lot of synergy with Ursa. Yeah, for sure. Just keep them locked in the kinetic field yep. and uh, you die. He has trouble closing gaps. Disruptor is the master of closing gaps with Glimpse and then preventing you from going anywhere after that. But now the big bad, the bird we've talked about, ad nauseum. The tomato viper. It's the viper. The, the OG Viper player, right? This guy uh, was picking the hero when no one else really was. Yep. He uh, is obviously a pretty big fan of it. So it's, uh, it can definitely be picked up very early in the, the current state of Dota. Tomato and, and Mott. pretty damn good. Five, Those are the, the two. Tomato and Mott. That's it. The, the only two bastards crazy enough to be playing Viper consistently for the last 10 years, regardless of the current state of affairs of all things related to Viper. Uh, they, they are the true experts. I, I'm excited. I think Razor are going to be banned out. There you go. Very smart. Smart, smart. Pretty open-ended here for Infamous. And Magnus also banned out. Were we seeing Magnus banned out in the previous games? That's also a change I believe we were. Ten seconds remaining. I know uh, Infamous always banned it out. Um, oh. At least they did in their series versus uh, G-Pride as well. Remaining. So I don't think we saw it so much in the first series, but... Yeah, I can't even remember. Might have been banned out in the last Dying match. Back. You're so jaded, Trent. <laughs> ah, some heroes were banned. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what they're doing. It's anyway. on the internet. If you really care, <laughs> you can go look it up, you rascals. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, it doesn't look like we're getting a whole lot of troll boiler today either. Always getting removed out of here. So 10th pick for LGD, another good reason to take the Ursa as he can go to all three lanes. He can be an off lane hero, he can be safe lane, he can go mid. Five seconds remaining. Uh, obviously with the Viper picked up, probably not going to see him in the mid lane. Uh, just to clarify, but, it was banned last game. Uh, Lich, Magnus, and Nakes PSG, were the three opening LGD bands from Infamous. There you go, got him. So changing things up a little bit at least. And 
Now the Earth Spirit was the one that went through because uh, last game PSG LGD banned out Earth Spirit, CM, and Shen, and this time they've banned out the Bounty Hunter. So we'll see if there's uh, any any interest in the potential Earth Spirit pickup. Ten seconds oh, it's remain. it's banned. Oh, is it, oh, it just got banned now. Okay, it sorry. just got banned. So there you go. So I, I was reading uh, off the other screen. <laughs> the uh, FYET still a possibility here. Of course, the uh, the Earth Shaker itself. Too, but I don't think we're going to wind up seeing that one today. Luna. Okay. Lunar. No lunar action. The moon I guess we were talking about heroes that they were using in their qualifier a lot, and Luna was one of them. So they're just uh, focusing on their previously played games. I think when she's like a Viper. She's mm -hmm. like a sleeper agent right now. Would that change to the aura instead of it being damaged? And now it's yeah. uh, stats. I, I think we will, in the future, see times where Luna is going to come out with some crazy pocket pick. And you're like, wow, that lane is way crazier than I thought it would be. I think Luna Undying is a lane that not enough people talk about that is pretty scary yeah. in the early levels. Luna in any strength sport is uh, definitely something. Uh, but now Rubik, I mean, Rubik is always a good counter pick to the Viper because you could always steal the Viper strike. And you're like, oh, free LT is Rubik. But now it's even better because you don't even, you, you don't even want Viper strike. You want that in Nether Toxin because then you throw it on Viper and suddenly he loses his uh, corrosive skin and he's very sad. And you're like, oh, that, I hate this. All right. This isn't fun at all. Not a Mary Poppin fans, that Viper. His own medicine don't taste so good. Hmm. Wow, you really had to work that one in there. Yeah. It's good you said that. You need a little bit of explanation. I couldn't have figured the uh, you know, <laughs> the sugar thing out myself. I was not going to get that far. It has been a couple decades since I've seen Mary Poppins, so maybe that's You a... needed the footnote on the joke, or else <laughs> that, that thing was not coming through. Well, now Dark Willow for Infamous. Uh, I think a, a good uh, support to pair with the Bane. Also not bad against uh, the Ten Ursa. Having a fear and some of those bramble mazes to have to navigate. Seconds yeah, I've seen crit like single-handedly win games on this hero. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's also popping off right now in the pubs thanks to Mars. It looks like a pretty dirty oh, combo. Yeah, the Mars ulti and the fear and the oh, brambles. I... Jeez, it's good. I've uh, I've seen that in a couple of my pub games actually. You're right. A lot of people have been picking that combo. In terms of Dark Willow friends uh, in competitive games, mm, not a whole lot really. Uh, I mean, she just, I, I guess, I mean, she can like kind of fit in with most things, right? She doesn't have anything that she necessarily has to, uh, partner up with. Like she offers a lot of good control. She mostly follows up, I would say. So she doesn't mind, um, a primary initiator who she's kind of going in after. What kind of cores do LGD want here? They've got both supports. We've got our Ursa. Now, what do we want to combo with this? Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, the... Hmm. Do we know what the offlane is? We don't know what the offlane is mm -hmm. for him. Well, so it they could might be. Pick their I guess with Tomato Viper, you're you're pretty safe guessing it's mid. But there's always that potential. You know, we've seen the yeah. the side lane Vipers. They'll grab a Pugna now. Guess that's a, a an okay hero to uh, potentially handle handle Viper. You've got some burst damage. You've got some sustainability. Definitely uh, someone that can put a lot of damage in behind the Ursa after he jumps in. It's also someone we see picked up a lot um, versus the Ursa 2, just for the use of the decrep. The other big hero being the Venomancer, but I think the Viper is already going to take that role uh, for this game. And now Infamous, they have to go for the two picks in a row, and they really just want to get whatever hero they think is uh, more likely to get banned, essentially. I think uh, if it was an offlaner, I think Brewmaster looks pretty good this game. Yeah, he's a little scary versus the Disruptor and the Rubik, though, but I definitely value the Cyclone versus the Ursa and the, the toss-up. Uh, or sorry, the uh, Dispel versus the Pugna, but uh, it'll actually be the Lycan here for Mason that they grab. All right, well, somebody that can hit buildings and take objectives. I think this is key. That is definitely an issue with Viper sometimes. Really good at fighting, not the best Sieger, nor our Bane or Dark Willow, so Lycan going to fix that problem. Oh, yeah. They instantly banned the Brew, though, so that's the question. I mean, if you wanted Brew, you probably had to pick it there because I think Brewmaster is just way more obvious to ban than Lycan is. Yes. So to me, that so. says Infamous just did not want um, the brew. Then again, we've seen some teams banning the Lycan today, so who knows? I think Lycan's potentially easier to manage, though, with what they've got. Ten you know, seconds. like Disruptor, Ursa, Pugna, even Rubik. Like, all of them have snares and way of handling Lycan. Um, I don't know if that's the case with Brewmaster. I think he, he has the potential to make Ursa's life a lot more difficult in that mid-game with his ultimate. Hmm. 
Kind of looks like a good Darkseer game, aside from the, uh, the age-old classic of Glimpse post Surge. Yeah, Lycan uh, does that love that ion asked. shell, though. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out, yeah, exactly, like how how can we enable the Lycan further? That's why it's kind of standing out to me. I guess the Doom is also still in. That could be okay. I guess most heroes are just kind of awful versus Ursa, though, which is why I gravitate towards like people that just don't have to interact with him. Like that's why Iron Shell is so good. See, what about like away. something? I don't know if they all have enough damage, but Underlordy. You know, somebody that can be the beefcake in the front line, but still give some kind of ensnare to help, or uh, you know, snare the, to help Lycan stick. The problem with people. that is that they all get bodied by Ursa. Yeah. When you think about Tide or Underlord or even like the, I mean they've been picking Abba lately. True. God, who else? I'm trying to think of someone that doesn't get crippled by Ursa but still enables Lycan to really do what Lycan wants to do. That I think they um is also an off try and push towers. Like that's why I kinda like the Darkseer. I think everything else from Darkseer syncs up pretty well with them here. And they're gonna ban the life sealer, which again kinda makes me think Darkseer. Can't think they of play so much Darkseer too. My God, can't think of too many better suggestions than old Darkseer. I think I'm just biased towards Underlord because I like playing him. But ten seconds remaining. A little bit of time uh, left in the reserve. There's also Centaur. If they want to try that, Five it can sometimes remaining. help versus um, these like the Pugna and everything. Like gives you some extra catch and everything, but I don't think he really helps their early game. Like he doesn't build the auras PSG fast enough. Bat, ooh, a bat rider. Okay, so this is uh, more lane focused as we were talking about like these heroes versus the Ursa. Definitely forget about the bat. Um, we saw that banned in the first phase, in a couple of our games this morning. Yeah, I like it here. I think it fits pretty close to that uh, set of parameters we laid out. Definitely helps out Lycan, gives them a really nice initiator, so you're a little less reliant on Bane to catch the the initiations. Good follow-up uh, so now damage. they're in a bit of a pickle here. It's like we try and put the Pugna mid versus the Viper, and we want, like, let's say you picked a, a Bat Rider counter in the lane, like like that Lifesteal that they banned out, or if they went back for the PL, then they're going to be constantly trying to do the matchup of they want the Ursa versus the Lycan, and then the PL or whatever it's going to be versus the Bat Rider. Then you end up in a lane swap territory, which kind of favors LGD, though, because they have the glimpse. Yeah. Where you you got to be careful. Well, I, this... This is crazy, but I, I think Jug actually could work okay. It's pretty yeah, good yeah, in that definitely. matchup. Same logic, for sure. Against Bat Rider, you know, he's kind of like a life stealer replacement. They it's made really it work last game. Though. You've got the healing, but it's the PL. Okay, so that's your your other option in that situation. Yeah. No, I actually kind of would have liked the Jug, too. I think that that's the aspect of Jug that people seem to forget about sometimes is that healing ward. And that's so unique to carries, having like an AoE heal for the team where you can siege back yeah. up for 15 seconds and then just re-engage uh, again. It was probably, though, the the single target BKB piercing probably was too much, though, that, that they probably weren't up for. it. Like, that's the fair. Jug game does look good, but the cooldown on spin is really long versus the sticky napalm. Even though, like, doppelganger isn't great, it's still better. And then the Fiend's Grip and uh, Lasso and Viper Strike. You have no chance of, like, missing basically your target, right? Whereas for the PL, they, they do not have good wave clear. Ten seconds remaining. That's and they don't have a great way to target him with Lasso and everything if he's just in his uh, clump. Seconds remaining. I think I like this LG draft a little bit better. Yeah, me too. I don't really... I mean, obviously, we just saw them get absolutely obliterated, so it's hard to really picture Infamous winning a game after playing like that. Yeah. Uh, but that was largely due to the lanes. These lanes look a little better. I think that the lanes will probably go better, but I think the mid game, again, there, it's just a little bit easier for LGD. It's a great Rubik pick. You have a way to deal with the Viper, which isn't always the case. They showed us what you can do with Disruptor last game. I have a lot of faith in the Pugna to take objectives and follow up. It's a it's a great front line. They've got a great mix of damage with physical, magical, a good back line, a good front line. It's just a very well-rounded draft. You look at Infamous, and you're relying a lot on this Bat Rider. You're definitely relying a lot on your supports, and there is pressure to make this Lycan pick worth it. I think to make this Lycan look good, you're going to have to win fights, and then you need to be able to punish and take those objectives. There's definitely a, a path to victory for Inf Infamous this game, but I think the uh, ease of execution advantage favors LGD. I think uh, the hardest part will just be using the uh, the Lycan in the uh, 
like in his alt form. Like once he's out of ulti, their their damage is pretty weak. Mm -hmm. Scaling may be a little bit of an issue as well. Prepare for battle. I think Ursa PL Pugna just straight up outscales this infamous draft if we're going 45 minutes plus. Who outscales who, sorry? You said LGD, right? I was saying LGD, yeah. I think like yeah, late yeah, game, they've sure. just... Because the, the PL has no answers late game. Got a clear advantage. And it's also one of those games where, let's say the lanes don't go perfectly and you have to sacrifice either the Ursa or the PL and mids a wash, you still have one scary core that's getting a lot of farm. I don't think Infamous will be able to shut down both of them. So if PL has a little slow start, Ursa will make the space for him or kind of vice versa. And that's the kind of stuff that scares me a little bit. It's hard to tell who saw what on those wards down there. I don't know if anyone even has a sentry on the Radiant. You can see both teams pinging a lot in the mid lane, but it looks like uh, Bane's the only one with a sentry here. So, yep. No Radiant sentries. Uh, boots first on Rubik, though. The old uh, off lane Rubik gets to play with uh, Chalice on the Ursa, so just needs to make sure that he can always be positioned uh, in between. He, he wants the bear in between himself and the enemy, pretty much over and over. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bane is the great bounty rune uh, guarantor. <laughs> There's really not a whole lot you can do. Sure is. We'll see a little skirmish down bottom. And Ame three will be able to pick that one up. It's going to be Infamous that grabs three. And he takes the Doppelganger really early. Jeez, he's still going to take a ton of damage. Just knew that he was forced in a really bad spot there. So costly for Ame. Uh, five more tangos to work with, and he's also got four on X Nova. You've got to imagine those are going to start being uh, passed over. And to the lanes we go. 2-1-2 two, two for both sides. Pugna Viper mid, no surprise there. Down bottom, we'll see the Dark Willow Batrider off lane against the Disruptor PL. What's interesting is that X Nova actually didn't have enough from the bounty runes to get stick either. Um, plus the way that Infamous positioned themselves, so X Nova needs to get to the side shop. Uh, and it, it looks like it'll be okay now, actually, with this wave pushing out. So he's very relieved because you need a stick in this lane. Yeah. And up top, Bane Lycan uh, against the Rubik Ursa, as you mentioned before. Uh, definitely a better laning setup compared to last game. I would expect this to be a lot more even. The only problem is that they have no kill potential. Uh, they being the, infamous? For the dire side. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the Bane can keep, out, oh. keep on like throwing out these brain saps, and that's kind of it. Say, if you walk into three brambles in a row, uh, they might have some kill power. But <laughs> Oh, I'm talking top lane. Oh, just top lane. Bottom lane is great. Well, even that, I think it's still... They have some kill power, but it's it's not super easy. They've got some, some tools on PSG LGD as well. You'll probably see this Willow uh, take the mid lane at some point uh, when the Vipers raid head to the jungle, probably around, like... Five or something like that. Wow, Ame As just TPs back to the tower. Keeps him alive. X Nova barely going to survive there. Yeah, this is like the PL is definitely good versus the Batrider, uh, especially in the mid and the late game. And he has the value of the dispel in the laning stage, but in the earlier levels, it is really weak. It's, uh, as you can see, the cooldown starts at 25, so pretty brutal. Yeah, definitely agreed there. But this is, this is a short lived oh. road bump. Ooh. Up top. up top. Is that going to be a kill on Wu? Nightmare. Chalice gets woken up, and Bane will make it back. They'll just finish off the creep instead. Yeah, it cost them basically nothing, though. 75 mana on the Ursa and a Telekinesis on the Rubik. So. Let's check out this yeah, mid lane a little bit. XM actually winning the matchup against Viper. 11-5 versus 10-1. Yeah, you can see Tomato's already off to the jungle. Just uh, pushes the wave in, but XM is going to grab it and pull it over to the side camp here, too. So he wants to try and keep pace with his Viper. Very nice. The benefits of the uh, the Radiant mid lane, but uh, this is one time about the Dark Willow coming mid, because eventually Viper, that's one of the benefits of the heroes, that they can just farm up in there, and of course the Dire Triangle, too, uh, and then try and accelerate this uh, Dark Willow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't really talk about Pugna as a lane solution to Viper. I wouldn't call it a counter per se, but the decrep is very annoying and makes Viper's last hitting life a little bit more difficult. So you can at least mess with him and stop him from free farming. Yeah, and it's just like the Viper, like how are you ever going to kill the Pugna? With, until you're six, and then you at least have a chance for it. But then he can still do things like decrep and TP and stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, and then you run into the problem of like Viper just wants to kill the wave, run to the jungle, and farm the jungle, but Pugna can blast the wave just as quick. So then it's, you know, suddenly he's on your tower and destroying it. So it was a really nice grab from uh, from LGD before the, uh, the last phase. Yeah, like back. oftentimes you want to save your mid, but they reveal the Viper so early that they get this Pugna. Yep. Just looking at the bottom lane, Ame getting some farm, but certainly not free farming. 12 and 4. Still a bit of a tough lane for him. And Bat Rider on the other side of the coin, getting some decent last hits. This offlane Ursa, kind of as uh, predicted, he's doing just fine. Yeah, they haven't uh, gotten any kills, though. I mean, obviously, there's still no first blood yet in this game, so. The fact that Mason is getting a, a half decent start already looks better than the last game. Yeah. The problem will just be, um, I, I guess Infamous had the better first rotation last game too, even, honestly, uh, with the Queen of Pain. But the problem was that the lanes were still so bad at that point. Uh, in this game, the rotation is not really going to be from the mid lane hero. It's probably going to be from the Dark Willow. As they're again hunting after Wu as he makes the pull. But Mason really trying to get after this double wave they pulled in here. Good positioning all around. A lot of respect going the way of this Rubik Ursa combo. Being very careful not to get caught by the telekinesis. Though, as I say that, Wu going to step a little too far forward. Tomato making the He's rotation. Okay, Nightmare has already been used. This is the five minute runes. Oh man, Mason's getting a triple wave under his tower right now. He is so happy. And they're going to get a first blood from the Bane. So, three to one bounty runes, but LGD get a first blood to make up for it. FY even comes in with a fade bolt to push back Mason. And they'll start denying these creeps. Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> things were things were looking up for a moment there. And then they come back. Ultimate's available from the mid lane now. Radiant structures are fortified. And a potential Radiant rotation. Rubik headed towards fortified. the mid. So Tomato's pretty far under his own tower. Curious to see how long he sticks around. I mean, we, we know where Viper players want to go. He knows that he wants to kill this wave. Now well, yeah, Pugna starts it off, gets a lot of damage. There's the telekinesis. Willow also making the rotation. Sets up the stun on the Pugna. He'll be forced to retreat. No kill on the Viper, but a lot of damage done. That was a standing still Pugna, right? <laughs> I just want to clarify that he just missed the root. Moose? I mean, I see a bronze star on this Dark Willow. Don't <laughs> let me down here. Can't miss these skills. The cooldowns are not that low. Yeah, it's true. Tomato standing right next to his shrine, sort of baiting in FY as best he can. Wu also going to be nearby. XM going to rotate up, but Moose is still down here. Who's actually going to find the first kill? It will be the Dire, but maybe an exchange back the other way. XM grabs one before he gets stunned up by the Cursed Crown. It's a hasted up Pugna, so very speedy. Tomato trying to body block, but Tomato. That's, uh, that's all <laughs> I like tomato. That, that was great. But that, that was a nice way to save Moose. I got way uh, too American. spotted by this ward, though. So let's be a little bit cautious there. X Nova didn't linger around after placing it, though. And I don't think he got spotted. Look at this little vision triangle that he's gone for. A bunch of fresh wards all planted down here. You can see where they're looking to play from the side of LGD. Pita in pretty deep. Does have a TP scroll. And I'm going to use it straight away. No vision. Let's work there. I don't think so. Very quiet game. Much different from our first match in this series. Still hasn't uh, jumped beyond a 1k net worth lead on either side. LGD yeah. with a very small advantage right now, but not much and to write said, home I mean, about. All three uh, Radiant cores, LGD looking good, but it's it, as he said, it's not a big lead at all. It basically just comes down to a couple of these kills, but that is a very quick pick on the Wu. Cool. He dies from Oh, it has the level eight, though. He got the Viper Strike. First crown makes it up to the high ground. Viper can't quite get the angle. Rubik with most of his abilities on cooldown, but XM goes back in. He wants this Willow, perhaps. She shifts into the Nether Realm, and now Papita's here stacking up the sticky. And that will secure the kill on XM. Now down low, Lasso onto FY. Cursed Crown on the high ground. Two dead on the side of PSG LGD as Infamous secure themselves a duo. 
Yeah, but Pikita managing to find something when he just can't go to his lane because his PL has gotten the levels where he's safe. And he's manages to get the kill on the Pugna to get himself 2-6, and then that helps get them the end one. Something that Disruptor is supposed to be doing right now with the, the glimpses you'd expect. But uh, X Nova is just trying to get to level 4. He just gets it under this tower. So, uh, Ame is still pretty scary as, as well as uh, Chalice, though. So... I, I'm a little worried for Infamous because they're starting to lose this tower essentially for free. Look at this big wrap round. Chalice might know he's done for. Back up top, yes indeed. Trying to make his way through the Bramble Maze. Will clip him once. Lycan pops the, the ultimate. Go. I don't know if this is going to be enough though. FY's no. here. Oh Mason, Light. don't do it. <laughs> he wanted Let him to go. dive it. He thought about it. Yeah, the, uh, he just kind of juked and jived enough that the Bane couldn't get in position for the Nightmare, so then they couldn't find like a nice surround um, to try and stop him from getting out. So Chal is just fully pushing it to the limit, and then XM's able to just come in right after with one Nether Blast and secure that tower. So really solid stuff. They are taking some damage on their mid here, and there's no one here to catch this wave, but it's not going to end up being a whole lot uh, to worry about here on the side of LGD. And so, suddenly, what was basically no lead is a 2k here just from the help of towers. Trent, this is what I'm worried about. It's the Phantom Lancer. Worried? Ame down bottom is mm -hmm. farming pretty well. Uh, number one on net worth now. That whole Look window we talked about where things are rough for him has pretty much expired, and he's not that far away from a Yasha. Like this but look, they're, they're 20 gold within each other. Okay, 70 now if he gets those last of Isn't that crazy? All yeah. three cores? That is really rare to see. That tight. Like, all of them within 100 gold of each other, yeah. But it's we haven't even seen like that. this PL pop off yet, and Infamous are already, well, oh, not Pepe maintaining the momentum. My. Got him. That's cute. Well done, Papita. On the other side. Oh, uh oh, that's Mason. They're going to find the dog, and they're going to put him in the kennel. That's his jungle. What are they doing in there? It's not very nice. Well, what happened to all these wards down bottom? If you ask yourself, where's the Lycan likely to be right now? It's only a couple well, answers to that question. When you see half the map down there. Yeah. Willow going to be able to get away from that one, but... Kind of the perfect target to find in that situation. Lycan has an okay kit working on the Necro Book, but this is that delicate window where Lycan really needs to power farm. He wants to accelerate. Yeah. He wants to get to those items that allow him to take over the game. Sort of like killing an anti-mage right after a Battle Fury. It's, it's pretty and, much the uh, perfect time. That cripples him so much. They knew he had his ward too, or they they knew he didn't have his ulti, right? And now he TPs right on top of this ward in the bottom lane. And they, they still see everything, so if they want to just go up top, they can. But it looks like they're content on getting the uh, Blink Dagger on the Ursa, as well as level 6 on X Nova before they want to play aggressive again. Probably going to be... Uh, oh, the Yasha's done for... Man, this courier is just... They're going in. It's having a time. FY up top, Telekinesis doesn't pull him back. Realizing there could be reinforcements, he might have bit off more than he could chew here. On the other side, maybe looking to chase down X Nova, but he'll make it back in time. And then down bottom, Pepita just gets repelled. So, quick pick on FY. A little freebie for Infamous. Yeah, punished a, a bit for playing so far up there. So, uh, X Nova did just buy the smoke. He's still waiting for some experience to get six, though. And, uh, and then he just wants to pair up with Chalice and this Blink Dagger. But the, the Tricor are all at this bottom tower. Papita's here, he's got the drums, but no other real means of initiation, and they're gonna come back to the shrine just to smoke up. Pugna's a little low on mana though, it's gonna force the pop here. Well, same idea for Infamous, they're already smoked behind that tier three. Oh, bad spot to run into them though. A oh, nice ward. Cross the river, this is so scary. And they never actually brought the smoke out, it's still in the, the stash of the disruptor, so. Radiance top tower is under now it's coming out on the courier, and Ame's just gonna head top. He's saying, "Yeah, I've had enough of this. There's five heroes bottom, thanks to all these wards again. That that one rotation has done so much for them. They're about to expire now, but th these wards, all three of them, lasted full duration on that bottom half, and it just gave Ame so much breathing room. Like he never had to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Ex Nova, find his way through the trees. He'll be good. I like this build from Papita." Brown Boots, Bracer, Drum of Endurance, just beef up. Gone are the days of rushing the Blink Dagger and getting away with it. Yeah, the drums were um, 
it, it's like a harder game for drums because he doesn't get to play a lot of jungle and he didn't really dominate his lane so it gets a little awkward because like what are his drums doing for him and all this downtime well like he's kind of moving around but he's not bodying or forcing him out of lane he's not even hitting camps because he's giving them all to his viper yeah it shifted the, for the first bit of the game it was pretty much him versus pl down bottom and he was cutting the wave a lot yeah. So he, he yeah, exactly. I don't know exactly when he picked it up, but um, the game has definitely changed since then. Initiation mid, Chalice jumps in onto the Viper, but he's got a lot of friends nearby. He's now on the defensive. Flaming Lasso is there with the ultimate expired. I don't know if Ursa can live through this, or Kenny makes it up to the high ground. Now his teammates are here. Wu's going to go down first. A one-for-one, one. Bat Rider makes it back up to the Radiant side of the river. He'll get caught by a Decrep, though. Another Q from Pugna will bring him down. Making it now a one for two. Infamous, low on HP, will not suffer any more casualties. These Rubik Nether Toxins are doing so much damage. <laughs> Look how much damage Rubik did in that fight, actually. He had four Nether Toxins out. With the, uh... Yeah. yeah. And this is, uh, what, one point into Arcane Supremacy? <laughs> that's, uh, it's only going to get worse from there. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Rubik really is looking like that go-to against a Viper if you don't have any other options. And X Nova just sitting under this Viper has the double sentry keeping him safe. Now he's going to see the Dark Will and he's like, ooh, that's an easier kill. Does have some teammates inbound, but same story for the Dyer right now. Necro Book level 1 secured on Mason. He's only got a little bit of time left here on this invis rune, and they are really like, it looks like they're almost trying to bait out Tomato. Still 14 seconds on his ultimate also, finally grabs him, and look at how fast they react, but Willow there with a beautiful fear, and it might still be enough to keep Tomato alive, and instead they're gonna turn on the Ursa. They've got a Fiend's grip and the damage. One down, and he's on the side of LGD. Really well played by Infamous. Just dangling that Viper out there, like, come on. I know you want to. You got a blink dagger on your Ursa. You guys want to kill, and then you're going to Roche. I know how this game works, right? Exactly what they were planning. And uh, they're able to quickly turn that one around, even out of an invis rune. So I'm sure very disappointing there for LGD. Not uh, the way you expect that to go. That should have just been a free engagement for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole time Papita's just down bottom. He's finally trying to get into that next item. Uh, is it worth going bots or blink? Let's see, this game, what is the catch situation like? The bots do look pretty tempting, but all right. Well, they're, they're not going to be uh, scared away here. They just go straight back into dire territory, wow. but Wu catches them with the nightmare. Great positioning from Wu to break the smoke and also catches the Ursa. Remember, he's got the blink dagger, so that completely stopped this smoke gank dead in its, dead in its tracks. X Nova forced to use the ultimate in combination with a kinetic field, and it's not even going to be enough to save him. Mu's able to finish him off from downtown. Now Viper headed up to the high ground, takes some decent damage. Fiend's grip. Chaotic fight, but Tomato, he's going to be the one to take big damage. Can't tell which no, which poison is which, but I think Rubik's <laughs> returning a lot of damage here, Trent. Yeah, and uh, they're still chasing after with Ame, but it looks like he will relax just for a second. The full wand pop now from the Dark Willow as well as the Bedlam will keep her safe. Akita wants a grab. Oh, they're going to turn on the Chalice just up. like that. Maybe they can bring down Wu again. He will fall. XM, though, he's in pretty hard. He gets brought down. Two for two. Infamous able to walk away without taking any more losses there, and they killed two cores themselves. I don't know what I saw in that fight that I thought was a Fiend's Grip, but... Did Rubik have it stolen? Man, the Bane brain stuff. Uh... Oh, I'm not sure, actually. I was just looking at the... Uh... That Ursa died so fast, actually. He got hit by the Shadow Realm for 266, and he got brain sapped both in the same 0.2 seconds. So he lost uh, 563 HP. <laughs> Did not get a chance for his ulti. Sorry to feel kind of bad for this Ursa. He's like That was almost just unlucky the way they were positioned there, and the Bane was just the perfect hero for the Nightmare to start that fight off. He just hasn't been able They're to forcing get it too in much, there. though, for sure, right? Like, yeah. you saw how they were playing before based off of their forward vision. Right now, they have no aggressive vision, and they're just running in smoked up. Like, that's sometimes that pays off like that, but they're really forcing the issue way too hard for the Roche. At the same time, they know that they're drawing Infamous away from farming, so they're still keeping a net worth lead because Ame is uh, very scary at the moment with the Fusal Blade. Yeah. Key item up on him, and oh, they might have another go on this Viper. Another set up into the static storm and this time they've got the right clicks tomato down the rest of infamous starting to retreat Wu, maybe the first one left behind glimpse will pull him back 
Nightmare buys him a second. But the Bane is done for. That's how you yeah. got to do it. And that was FY. Instantly, he goes for the lasso. Like, Telekinesis into his own lasso, steals the Netatoxin, breaking the Viper, and not such a taggy hero anymore after that. See, that's what they were expecting to happen with the invisibility rune on exactly. Viper. Just took the second go around to make it happen. Yeah, but now into the pit they go. And uh, that is Rubik Netherotoxin. That Viper is dead. You know, handy. Don't worry, I got you guys. If they're stacked on each on top of each other, I don't think there's any way to tell the difference. It's just a giant puddle of green. Yeah, no, there's there's no real telling. The Nether Toxin. How is this Bat Rider doing? He has picked up the Boots of Travel now, so prioritizing movement speed over the Blink Dagger. And 1,700 gold, not that far away, of course, will be a key item. And the Necro Book 3 just around the corner. So Mason has actually had this time to farm that I was talking about. He's number one on net worth for their team, just behind that of the Pugna. He's starting to beef up. Yeah, his Necro 3 will be really nice for the, uh, the Pugna. Yeah. Speaking of Pugna, Dagon level 1 also up. So more burst damage for uh, PSG. Aether Lens... Dagon. Yeah, this is uh, some nasty stuff here. It's, uh, the Pugna's just, they, they can't even see it, right? I mean, you see the ping from the Dark Willow, because there's another one on the high ground, and there's some blasts hitting your tower, but uh, he's able to sit so far back with the Aether Lens that he doesn't even show on the mini-map. So you have to be paying attention to make sure you don't just lose a bunch of damage to your tower. Definitely getting a little bit of server lag here on my side. I don't know if you're getting that as well. I only got it that one time, and then it went away, so mm. hopefully it'll just dissipate for you. Yep, I'm so having that. My, my in-game frames are high, but I think we're getting some packet loss or something along the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just the servers. You know, yep. some, probably an auto chess tournament going on or something. Well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, how it is. 20-minute uh, bounties, Dire going top, Raining going bottom. Uh, you can see that LGD have made a point of trying to get better vision up in that same area. And uh, maybe where we're going to see them play up next, trying to take that top tower for now. They're going to be very happy, easily taking bottom. Difficult to retaliate here from the side of Infamous and PL. Okay, so instead of going Manta with his defusal, he goes back for the S and Y. Gives himself a little bit of status resistance here. And just some uh, general beefiness. Okay. I kind of like it, actually. The way they're playing this, he needs to be active, and I think he'll get more value out of it than a Manta if they take a fight in the immediate future. And it seems they will. Papita pulled back with a glimpse. There is a oh, Fiend Strip onto the PL, but I don't know how much it's going to matter. Wu keeps himself alive. They're per pulling this Ursa in deep. Chalice with no hope. But on the other side, Wu does get killed. It's a one for one. Ame may be left behind. Able to doppelganger back. Nice kinetic field. Rod of Atos slows him down a bit more, but the Willow <laughs> finally falls. <laughs> Man, she went down quick. Well, that looks really good because they threw everything on that Bat Rider. Uh, they knew he was about to slip himself away there with the Boots of Travel, but he's able to steal away the Ursa. But the fact that you lose this Dark Willow, who's still level 11, not having the second point in her ulti hurting her, uh, especially with the damage amp in the Bedlam, almost doubles up there when you hit 12. But she didn't even get a chance for it, as he did get off the uh, a life drain before she could get into the uh, Shadow Realm. 5k net worth now at 20 minutes. Infamous I'm hanging at, in just there. Instantly for that next tower, man. Tier 1, Tier 2, gone. Boom. Into the mid lane. They didn't even bring the PL. Tower of the Pugna. Fat Rider does not have Lasso. They, uh, they know that there's no Lycan ulti, so they're able to play more aggressive. Okay. Okay, back to farming we go. Roshan, still a long time till the big boy comes back. BKB, yeah. Coming up for the Earth. And they're smoking. Alright, who are we last on? What's the play here? I think PL. catching the Ursa could work pretty well. It has in the last couple fights. He's going to be the one, one that gets bumped into, and fire. there it is. It's Chalice. Fiend's grip up in just a couple of seconds, but he's got friends. On the other side, they're going to grab the Viper, and that'll go one for one to start off the fight. Lycan with the ultimate form on, trying to figure out if he wants to fight or run, and it looks like it'll be the latter, but the glimpse 
The long range glimpse indeed. He gets pulled back. Kinetic Field won't lock him in. Shapeship just about to expire, but he makes it back past his tier two. I'm more surprised the uh, Dark Willow was able to get out of that one, honestly. He was so low. Uh, there, there's some beautiful, you know, I don't know, some, something great about this Rubik just destroying the Viper every fight. He does nothing. He did 280 damage to that engagement. He just gets Nether Toxin and he dies right away. Nice to see him, you know, get a, get a taste of it. It's it one of those, like, smoke-on-smoke smoke situations where Infamous were thinking, hey, we caught the Ursa, this is great, and then LGD wrap around, and they go, wow, we caught the Viper, this is great. Unfortunately, Infamous had less in the tank after those two initiations, and Ame is in this scary scary spot where he is close to popping off. Heart of Tarras queued up next, and he is not far off, Trent. No, he's really not. About uh, like 1,400 gold or so, which does not take too long for him, and that should be done in time for the Roche, uh, and therefore the Roche fight. So the, the next Lycan ulti currently 30 seconds away, and they're already feeling pressure to smoke up here. They've got the Blink, they've got uh, the Lasso, and... Really, they're just letting Mason farm this ancient camp. Because <laughs> they're just like, yeah, we kind of need like an ulti to win a fight. So we're just all stuck here waiting for him. What do you grab next on Lycan, you think? 3k gold after the Necro 3. Uh, probably BKB. I don't think he has a choice. As depressing as that is. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, that's oh good grab. here we go. Lasso over the tree line. Glimpse might not break it. Yes, it does. It's just enough room, but FY still gets brought down nonetheless. Who are they going to find next? X Nova, he gets rooted up. They find both supports. It's a great rotation from Infamous. I don't know that these cores Damn. from LGD are going to be able to do much in response. Dude, how fast was Mason on that purge? Yo, I mean, I, I haven't really praised Mason too much, but he got him out of that Yule like instantly. Like, he was onto that uh, Necro Archer so fast. Sign of life out of Infamous. It's only a pick off on a set of supports. Still a decent net worth gain, but gonna need a few more of those to really change the state of this game. It's all about that next Roche, really. Oh, well, you know, sometimes you go for a bad. <laughs> okay. Missed that one. Sorry about that. Uh, freebie for XM. A uh, level two Dagon, so probably didn't miss anything too exciting. Bane getting tasered. Mason's—he's looking at that big brain play. He—he's thinking there's got to be something. I, I think that's his plan right now. It's like there's got to be something beyond BKB. Like, like let's say I buy a BKB. Ah, he's just doing it. All right. Uh, that's my question. If he hadn't bought it that whole time, he had the empty slot. He must have been considering, right? Absolutely. Or else he would have loved to have that ogre club quite a bit earlier. So it, it just comes down to there's really nothing else, unfortunately. But there it is, the PL having the heart. The heart. And how are they going to kill this guy? Have a heart, Trent. Here we go. Initiation. They're going to catch the Bat Rider. That's not the way it's supposed to go. This time, Chalice finally finds his vengeance, shows off that BKB, and gets a kill on the enemy initiator. Now they want Moose, this Dark Willow, on the run. Does have a Yule Scepter, but Ame, he gets the charge. TP. And Willow's going to live. Gotta love that nether form, or shadow realm. Almost had it. And the Roche timer, oh my god, 20 seconds. 15 seconds away now. This thing is instantaneous. Neither team has a good way to scout it though. I guess Lycan Wolves will be the best. Ame, but. he's going in. Tomato, able to use his guardians. All right, will Ame die this game? I don't think so. I'm, I'm voting no. Those. I, I think, think if he, he was gonna die, die, it was gonna be before he got Heart of Tarrasque. I, I think, uh, oh, uh oh, Mason checking that BKB. It, do, it does work. Huh? Oh. Uh, yeah, no, not, not great. Uh oh. I panicked. I thought you were talking about a wraparound. I was like, oh, God, where's oh. Mason? What's he doing? Oh. Well, that's a 10 second BKB bummer. Yeah, <laughs> not ideal. I don't think they saw it, though. That is a key thing. I don't think LGD saw it. He was too far back. I think they, uh, maybe. It was nighttime, it was hard to tell. I didn't see exactly where he popped it. I didn't see it, any but pings, so guessing, maybe not. Guessing from the mini map. Oh, mid lane again. They're just going to charge straight in. Chalice pops his BKB again. They've killed Wu. They really want this Viper, and he's going down pretty fast. Another blink forward, and they will find that kill. Two dead, no buybacks available for Infamous. Moose will head east. He'll survive, but now mid lane, it could be under pressure. Creeps still pushed out. One melee creep snuck by, holding things back, but... 
they can still siege pretty easily with Pugna from the low ground regardless. You know that really like goofy Mason laugh that he does when he's casting and he sees someone do something really stupid? I just envision him watching someone do that same BKB play and having that goofy laugh. He's <laughs> probably not laughing quite as hard right now after these two <laughs> games. And uh, yeah, into the Roche, they uh, will be getting themselves at Aegis and Cheese. And Viz PL down bottom also. Ursa should be able to take this down. Easy peasy. XM just sort of lingering outside of the pit. Gonna be a butterfly on this Phantom Lancer before too long. Oh no, that's that's scary. I, I don't think he needs the items. Can he just donate his gold? Can he just buy a moon shard for this Rubik or something? I, I think he's good. You know? Ame's <laughs> he's had his time. I mean, FY he's is not really champ. broke himself, dude. He's got a blink Yule's working on an Agonims. He's yeah, he's, he's doing alright. He's number one Man. on the supports by a, a pretty good margin there. They actually they pick such strong cores that they can get away with this. Like their support duo. Is uh, like kind of trash, right? Like Rubik Disruptor, but their cores are so strong that it doesn't matter. These are three strong laning cores. Oh, yeah. That Bane just got obliterated. And then if you can get out of the lanes, obviously these two supports are great. Like these are like ultimate late game supports. Yeah. Again, folks, having some uh, connection issues over here to Europe, it seems. Definitely game-based lag, so not a hell of a lot I can do about it. Dota TV? Mm-hmm. It's okay. Nothing's happening anyway. Hey, it's not too bad. It's just a slightly... Oh, oh yeah. Thing, I, I just got a little bit of it, too. Yep. Papita. Glimpse back. Hello, Batrider. He's going to make him work for this. No escape route. <laughs> Oh, Dark Willow. Run with your Shadow Realm. PL just feels unstoppable right now. Yeah, he's not going down. What do you, what uh, 25 talent do you think he grabs here? Is this an obvious doppelganger game? Uh, I don't know. I almost kind of want to see the crit. I feel like he's just he's not going to die anyway. Does he even need doppelganger? I don't think he's even going to get it. But I, if I had to guess, I feel like Ame's going to take the crit. Yeah, seeing uh, the Lycan die there, this one could be over sooner rather than later. But, I mean, that was that was a heartbreaker. That's their position one. That's their big farmer. That's their big boy. Their big boy just got put to sleep. I didn't know euthanasia was legal in Dota. Woo, in some trouble. Bane, he's actually going to survive through all of that. But the fact that all they can do is run behind their tier fours into the well is certainly not a good sign. No glyph for the Dire here. Mid tier three falls, top tier three taking some damage. Lycan up in 10, he does have a buyback. Definitely understand why Mason wants to hold it. Buyback now from the Willow. Mid range go down, they will grab a lasso. Ursa, possibly in trouble, but remember he's got Aegis. So back to life he'll come. And now they jump in, the PL's here. Ame, doing what damage he can, is a decent terrorize, sets up onto FY, but Chalice BKB on, he is hungry! And this bear is hunting. Tomato in the front lines, just getting ripped apart by Phantom Lancer after Phantom Lancer. Chalice oh, getting brought Chalice. down low, but healed up by XM. Sharing is caring, though a three hero cursed crown can moose clean it up. He's only got one, Chalice goes down two. They've actually about, lost uh, the pug on top of that. He's bought back. Moose gets brought down by Ame, though. There's a full butterfly on the PL. He's going to back out, but he is feeling pretty darn godlike. Infamous hang on, but it's some damage done. Buyback's used. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty crazy hang, though. Like, they kept both melee racks narrowly alive. All right, Ame, don't, don't throw this. Let's see it. He's going to go in onto the Bat Rider. He needs to be a little careful here. Not too cocky. He doesn't make it to the low ground. This is potentially scary. BKB from Papita into the Tier 4s. This PL's going for it. Doppelganger again. He's got XM a Pugna in here a with him, and I think he's just regenerating too much, Trent. I mean, I'm pretty sure they can't kill him, but it's just like, this looks a little unnecessary. I mean, he's, he's an actual raid boss right now. Mid barracks have been brought down. Tomato finally dies as XM jumps back in, and that's it. He calls GG. 
He knows it's over, and PSG LGD will take game two. Much less convincing fashion, but a flawless victory for Ame's PL. Yeah, Ame just incredible couple of games. We talked about how it looked like Fnatic were having trouble enabling Abed to really like stand out these games. I feel like LGD just made the two best picks possible. I think he got 10th pick both times, right? Or at least close to it mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, the PL and the Jug. Just both games. Yeah, it was. It was 10th pick both times, I, I think. So, I believe so. Damn fine games from him. Well deserving of the 10th pick. Clearly nothing that could stop him in either match. And it, although Infamous did much better in the laning stage this time, they still got outmaneuvered uh, in the mid game. Like even when there were a couple moments where it, like they they read the fact that they were looking for the Ursa gank into the Roche pit, and then they were even able to defend off of it. The the like and ulti just felt like he wasn't far enough ahead that yeah. uh, they they could afford to fight without like an ulti whatsoever. And they they didn't ever win a fight near a tower or something to like alt push into that. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they didn't really have the best, like, ratting coming out, even though they had the Batrider, too, with the bots. They just never felt like they were moving LGD around the map. Absolutely. I think the Lycan, based on that game, feels like a delicate pick to me. If you have a good lane and you can play from ahead, he is still really scary. But in games like that, it doesn't take much to throw off his momentum. And once he falls behind, you really get stuck in that, well, I need my next item, well, I need my BKB. What did the BKB do that game? He didn't even really get to use it that much. Well, you know, once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, the death after that, when he could have used it to TP out, he didn't. He ended up dying. That one was close call. You know, okay. But then even in those last team fights, I don't know if there was a perfect item for the Lycan, but it just seemed like a draft very hard to execute for Infamous. Tough game for Wu also. 0-13 and 13 on the Bane. That's brutal. Yeah. So that means they'll be in the losers match tomorrow versus Fnatic. Uh, assuming we're on the same group, which I kind of feel like we will be. I think so. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure. That I only got confirmation sense. that we were on the same group for today um, yeah. and that we weren't going to jump around like each stream will just stick with one group. I think that'll be the case again tomorrow, but they might switch it up so that different teams show up on the mainstream. That is true. That is a fair point. So TBD, I have app. They might oh, have that's not why have they even put decided yet either. The same group. Oh, I see. They wanted that matchup on the mainstream. They're smart, you know those guys. Yep. Yep. No, they're they're I'm thinking. Just kidding. So uh, so uh, the first match tomorrow is the winners' match at the very least, and that's across all the groups. So mm -hmm. currently, as it stands, I guess spoiler alerts. If you don't want, you know, you don't want to know any other groups, you're watching the vods or something. Quit now. But uh, it's going to be Secret versus Liquid in Group A. Hype. Uh, it's going to be NIP versus LGD, which will be interesting to see if NIP can kind of stand up. Uh, kind of like how they did so well versus Fnatic and LGD did so well versus Infamous. I'm kind of curious how these two will stack up with XM playing in a maybe. Uh, and then in our other groups, we still have a couple to be decided here. It looks like Ehome and Mineski are way behind in timing. They're still in game one. Oh, and wow. EG and Navi are currently in game three. Okay. So... All right, well, you heard it, folks. Get over to those other streams. Dream League uh, for the main, and then Dream League 2, 3, 4 for the others. Dream League 2 was first done today, so we're going to show some commercials, cue some music, uh, and then we're getting out of here. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow. Same place, same time for another round of group stage madness. And then after that, you'll have your primary stream to carry you away for the rest of the major. We're done Bye. for the day. Trent, it was a pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow, bud. Yeah, you got it. All right, see you later, boys.